Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Policy and Rights, the show about human rights and government policy. Okay, welcome back, everyone. And this um, happening is a, a serious um, case of how racism is very active in uh, our systems and is just r- running rampant. Um, Adrian Dix is about to discuss something about a racist game where. Um, People in emergency room, the the hospital is not named. The healthcare system of uh, uh, is not named uh, due to further investigation. But the game was played to guess the blood alcohol level of the person who walked in the uh, ER. So while we're in the midst of of everything else trying to eliminate systemic racism, this comes to light. And Adrian Dix is promising to um, do further investigation and to find a way to um, address the people who were involved in it in an appropriate manner. Rather that be suspensions, firing, however that comes about. Um... Uh, Mr. Dix is is promising to take care of that, and he's um, laid it on the hands of a a person um, to do the investigation and report all the facts back to us as they come. So let's listen to uh, what um, Minister Adrian Dix has to actually say. Good morning. My name is Adrian Dix. I'm BC's Minister of Health. Uh, Last night, I was made aware of serious allegations of racist and abhorrent practices in an emergency room or emergency rooms in British Columbia. If confirmed, the conduct is beyond unacceptable. The allegation is that a game was being played to guess the blood alcohol level of patients in the ER, in particular Indigenous people, and perhaps others. If true, it is intolerable, unacceptable, and racist. and and its effect on patient care is intolerable, unacceptable, and racist. Uh, I have appointed Mary Ellen Turpel-Lafont, an outstanding British Columbian, to to, uh, investigate the facts of this issue and make recommendations about immediate and long-term next steps. Ms. Turpel-Lafont, as you know, is the former child representative in BC, an outstanding lawyer and former provincial court judge in Saskatchewan. She will follow the facts wherever they lead and that is my expectation. As you know, I will also be reaching out to indigenous leaders in British Columbia, especially in healthcare, the First Nations Health Council, the First Nations Health Authority, uh, the uh, First Nations representative on the boards of health authorities and many more as we address the fundamental issues that uh, are involved. For, for a number of years, we've been working together collaboratively, all the partners in healthcare, to pursue uh, cultural safety in our healthcare system, cultural safety and humility in our healthcare system and in the practices of that system. That work is more important than ever. It is fundamental to what we need to do together. And we must continue those efforts, expand those efforts, and work on those efforts. But with respect to these practices and these actions, action is required. It's why having learned about it last night, I've appointed Mary Ellen Turpel Lafon. It's why we need to t- continue to take action on these matters today to determine both the, 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 uh, the, the remedies required and the reconciliation required to go forward. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As a reminder, uh, press star 1 to hear for questions. 
There will be one question and one follow-up. The first question is from Richard Zussman of Global News. Please go ahead. Minister, the phone line cut off. I don't know how much of your beginning, so I don't know if you provided these details, but I'm just curious if we know how long these incidents took place for, where they took place, how widespread this is, and whether any doctors or nurses that are involved have been uh, suspended, uh, fired, or, or put on leave. Well, uh, these uh, issues came to my attention last night. So, on the former points, uh, I think the answer. On the latter points, the answer is no. But uh, these issues came to my attention. Uh, they're serious allegations. They obviously need to be investigated uh, so that we determine the extent of them, and that's what Marilyn Terpelafont will do. But it also requires recommendations, remedies, and reconciliation going forward. And I'll be seeking, obviously, her recommendations and advice and others as to the next steps. I think uh, I don't know if you were, uh, if you heard some of the details of the of what the allegations are. They involve a game being being played, guessing the blood alcohol level of patients in the ER, and it, in particular Indigenous patients, and obvi the obvious effect of such games being played on patient care. And so uh, it's, of course, important to determine the facts, but it's also important to work together to take action and to move forward. Thank you, Richard. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I, I just, I'm really sorry, Minister, because we did miss the beginning. I just don't know what authorities this involves, how long it's been happening, and how widespread it, it's been. Well, that, that's why we, we need, uh, as I say, these issues were brought to my attention last night. All of those facts have not been determined, but there is sufficient information to require uh, this investigation, uh, and uh, that's why I've asked Mary Ellen Turpel Lafon to work on the to to go through to establish the facts, and also also for us to immediately engage in a process of engaging in remedies and reconciliation on these questions, because uh, uh, should uh, these practices be confirmed, uh, they are unacceptable and racist. Thank you. The next question is from Justine Hunter, Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Thanks, Minister. And, and like Richard, I didn't hear the first part, so I don't know if you've identified if this was one particular hospital or not. So if you could clarify that, that would be great. Also, I mean, there have been reports of systemic racism in Canadian health care for years. And I'm wondering if you regard this as a one-off uh, situation, if this in fact happened, or whether you recognize a, a larger issue that needs to be addressed here? There is absolutely a larger issue that needs to be addressed. That's why uh, we're engaged together in a path that uh, to pursue in practices in healthcare, uh, cultural safety and humility. Absolutely there is. And uh, I have, since becoming Minister of Health, regularly met with Indigenous communities and communities around BC, and issues like this have been raised. I think these issues are uh, the individual, the particular issues are so significantly serious that they require uh, an investigation by someone of, uh, of Mr. Pelopon's stature and authority, and I think that's important. And we have to continue to do this work because there is, it is beyond dispute that uh, that. Uh, uh, there is uh, people have suffered in our province from systemic racism in many fields, and healthcare is one of those. Okay, but we still Thank you, Justine. Do you have a follow-up? Oh, yeah. and and I, I I apologize, Justine. With respect, maybe what I'll just say is what I said at the beginning, because you because you were Thank cut you. off. Uh, that last night I was made aware of serious allegations of racist and completely abhorrent practices in an emergency room or emergency rooms in BC if confirmed the conduct is beyond unacceptable. Uh, the allegation is that a game is being played to guess the actual the uh, blood alcohol level of patients in the emergency rooms, in particular with Indigenous people and perhaps others. And if true, it's intolerable, unacceptable and racist and of course affect, affected profoundly patient care. So uh, this requires, uh, in my view, an immediate response. I found out about it last night. I was in touch with, uh, obviously, with uh, senior officials of the Ministry of Health. I contacted uh, and others 
uh, I contacted uh, Mary Ellen Terpel Lafont and asked her to uh, to lead uh, the investigation and uh, of this issue. I think uh, she has both the credibility and uh, to she has the credibility to do that and will do an excellent job. And in the end as well, we need to engage with the First Nations Health Council, with First Nations uh, leadership on this question as well. I consider these allegations very serious. Of course we have to assess the facts, and that requires uh, an investigation to take place, but we also have to see action. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Camille Baines of Canadian Press. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Good morning. I'd like to know how you were made aware of the of this game that was going on, uh, by whom, and um, have you given uh, Ms. Tur Turpelafon some kind of a timeline to prepare a report? Well, she, uh, Ms. Turpelafon, will be um, will be starting uh, immediately, as in Monday, I believe, and uh, and uh, obviously um, there are both immediate and longer term steps that can be taken. But she has to assess the facts and uh, and take the time that she needs to uh, to assemble those and make recommendations. But obviously, I, I believe there's urgency here, and that's why we've acted in this way. With respect to who informed me of this, I was uh, uh, I was informed of this by the Deputy Minister of Health, Steve Brown. How was he informed? Uh, um, I'll, I'll find that out, but he was informed. He, he uh, both received the information from the community and uh, from within the system. Thank you. The next question is from Marcella Bernardo, News 1130. Minister, thank you for taking my question. Just uh, regarding the, the timeline of this and uh, how soon you hope to have answers, uh, I know that you've already uh, touched on this, but also uh, what what does it tell you that, that you even have to investigate something like this in 2020? It tells us uh, why we have so far to go. But it tells us that, and as if we needed to know that, that systemic racism has not just existed in our country, but exists in our country and has impacts in all walks of life. And uh, this is the work we've been doing. It's why we've been doing this work together uh, over the last number of years and why we have to continue to do that work. I, I think there has been progress, but, um, but what this tells us is that, that there is a lot more work to do and we have to continue to do it. So yes, um, it is uh, um, beyond disappointing, but at the same time, we have to continue to make the progress we're making. We have to continue to work. We have to continue to do the work with communities uh, and uh, with leadership and with communities uh, to respond to these issues. I believe that we will hear as a result of this, because this is, this is what happens, other concerns, situations that reflect these same problems in our society. But we can only, we have to take these steps and that's, these are the steps we're taking. So we need to be specific, but we also need to continue our, uh, the path that we're on to ensure that there's cultural safety in our healthcare system. It's absolutely essential. Just, just a quick follow-up, if you could elaborate on what, why you're reluctant to say where this happened, which health region, was it in the Lower Mainland or was it further north? Uh, I, I'm not reluctant. What I want to do is establish all the facts. There's sufficient, uh, in my view, uh, the allegations are su sufficient to require an investigation. But uh, that investigation will determine all the facts and I think it's important to allow that to happen. But uh, I want to say very clear, clearly, that if substantiated, these practices are racist and unacceptable, and uh, there is a path to go on that we need to go on together. And uh, of course, I will be part of it. It's not just uh, Mary Ellen Terpel and, and many other people. We need to involve the many leaders, both at the First Nations Health Council, uh, the, the uh, First Nations Health Authority, uh, the Métis Authority, the, the uh, all, all relevant authorities in BC have to be involved in this and we have to be involved together to address these issues. This requires remedy, yes, and reconciliation as well. Vaughn Palmer, Vancouver Sun. 
Bidet Minister, you've referred several times to a game. Am I given to understand that this is some sort of computer or telephone app where people were effectively scoring how drunk somebody was? Is that your understanding from this? Uh, I, I, I don't have that detail, um, uh, Vaughn. The, the story, the, the game appears to be uh, to guess the blood alcohol level, how that was done and, uh, and how the game was run uh, will require more information. But the, the game involved guessing the blood alcohol level of patients essentially uh, in advance or during their treatment. And uh, obviously uh, playing a game of that sort is beyond unacceptable. Um, Follow-up question, um, I realize it's early, uh, what sort of mandate and powers will be given to Mary Ellen Turpel LaFond and will you make those public at some point, please? Yeah, yes, a and uh, uh, she will have the authority and the power to investigate uh, as she sees fit. And uh, that, as you know, as you've seen in the past, that may require an expansion of legal authority at some point. For the moment, she's, uh, she will be determining facts and making recommendations. Binder Sedgen, CTV. Um, hi, Minister. You said in previous discussions with Indigenous leaders that you had heard of issues like this. Can you expand on that? Uh, I've heard of concerns. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, uh, in the last period, uh, as you'll know, We've announced uh, new hospital projects um, all over BC, and in each case, we've involved uh, First Nations community, Indigenous communities, in er, around the construction of new hospitals. And without exception, without exception, uh, I learn of uh, how people have felt of the history of the existing buildings and how we have to move forward from that. And when I meet with First Nations uh, leaders. Uh, and uh, Métis leaders and others, of course we hear uh, uh, um, stories and circumstances uh, where people are not treated well in the healthcare system, where they're treated uh, inappropriately in the healthcare system. These issues get raised and we have processes to address those issues. And we're engaged together proactively uh, to uh, to uh, support cultural safety in the system and uh, give enormous credit to the First Nations Health Authority, the First Nations Health Council, to, uh, to uh, friendship centers, to the Métis National Council, to others who are involved in this process of reconciliation. And we simply, we simply have to continue and expand on that uh, while we address the specific allegations being made here. So it sounds like there's um, a different process for other types of issues, and this one you decided uh, warranted an investigation. The, 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 Did the deputy minister do some pre-investigation to find out how, you know, how um, how the allegation came about, and if there might be some. These it, these issues came out, out through processes that are already existent to. Uh, to pursue these issues. So we, uh, we have uh, processes of cultural safety uh, in the system now and engagement now that are led uh, in, uh, in uh, almost all cases by both health authorities and First Nations leaders and Indigenous leaders. Uh, but uh, but uh, in this case, these, this information came forward and I, I think it was uh, obviously unacceptable that this practice continue and uh, action was required, and that's the action we're taking today. I hope, it would be my hope, um, but, but um, I say this with, uh, with all caution, that this will be a moment where we can continue and advance and speed up the work we're doing together on reconciliation. But uh, it's also a moment uh, uh, that we have to recognize the situation that exists. Leanne Young, CBC News. Hi there, Minister. So um, I guess, you know, so it says either room or rooms. Do you know if this was multiple rooms at this point, emergency rooms? And have these health care workers been suspended in the meantime? No. Uh, as I say, these issues came to my attention last night. And we're taking the steps we've taken to investigate, to determine the facts, and then to take action, to seek remedy. Uh, in these cases, but also 
uh, to, to continue to pursue uh, reconciliation and advancement here. But uh, uh, that is what we're asking, uh, and I'm asking Mr. Pellafon to do, is to seek the facts, to determine where they are, and to uh, assist us in making recommendations as we go forward. In the, as well, we need to work closely with the uh, First Nations Health Council, with the Maine National Council, with, uh, with the First Nations Health Authorities to continue to pursue both these issues and to ensure that there are remedies in these cases, and as well to uh, ensure uh, and improve cultural safety across the system. Sorry, so Minister, does that mean that in the meantime, while this investigation is underway, that these doctors and, and these nurses who were allegedly practicing this game are still working right now. Is that what you're saying? What we have to do is, the, as I say, the allegations came to our attention yesterday, to my attention yesterday evening, and we are um, right now finding the facts and uh, pursuing the facts, and I think that's the right thing to do because we need to operate on that basis. We need to also pursue uh, reconciliation and address issues around racism in the healthcare system and advance those efforts. And as well, we need to uh, to uh, see where we need to go forward in terms of remedies in this, these cases, and as well in terms of reconciliation. And that's what we're seeking. Uh, that's what I've asked uh, Mary Ellen Trapel Lafon to do. Mary Griffith, Check News. Oh, hi, Minister. Um, I'm just wondering um, about your reluctance to even identify the health authority where um, these games were um, playing out in the ER room or rooms. Uh, because I think uh, it's really important to determine the facts here, and that's what I've asked Mary Ellen Terpelefon to do. And so uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not, uh, and what we need to do then is to ensure that. Uh, all of the facts then established are laid out for everyone to see uh, and that's uh, that's an important part of this process it's a part important part of cultural safety so those issues um, once specifically determined um, they will absolutely be provided to you and just as a follow-up you had talked about how um, these games so-called games were compromising patient um, health. Could you just expand on that a bit? Uh, I think uh, what they represent and um, uh, what they represent, and we've seen other cases and uh, you know, we talked about how we pursue other cases earlier. We, we've routinely done uh, do that when cases of, uh, of, uh, of racism exist in the healthcare system, and they do from time to time. We pursue those, uh, we pursue those and pursue reconciliation and remedy in those cases as well. So uh, that's, uh, I think it's important to, uh, to do that in all cases, and we're going to be doing that in this case. Moira Whiten, the TAI. Hi, good afternoon, Minister. Um, this is an incident on the more overt side of systemic racism. How is your ministry going to tackle the more insidious forms of unconscious biases among healthcare professionals that do lead to poor patient outcomes? Uh, I think uh, by continuing the work, we've been doing this work together. Uh, since before I became Minister of Health, the Ministry of Health, the First Nations Health Council, the First Nations Health Council Authority, Indigenous leaders and others are on this path together of cultural safety. And there is a, there is a distance to travel and a distance that we need to travel together. But that work is being done and continuing to be done now. And uh, what this tells us is we have to not just continue that work but expand that work. Uh, across the system, and I can tell you about the training and all of the work that's been done. But today uh, is, is not necessarily a day to do that. But uh, obviously, uh, we are in the process of trying to make systemic change, and that th those efforts have to be redoubled and tripled and quadrupled uh, for whatever it takes. And uh, to follow up. Um, given that these concerns came from within staff in the community, how confident are you that uh, further incidents may arise and how are people protected should they come forward? Well, I think that's uh, why uh, we need uh, to as both establish the facts and make recommendations, but also work together on the broader issues and as they affect people, not just in this case and how they may have affected people in these cases, but how they affect people every day in our healthcare system. We've got work to do. And, uh, and uh, when cases arise, we consistently take, that, take on that work. But I think that 
uh, the circumstances of this case um, uh, require uh, both an establishment of fact and action, and action will follow. Lisa Cordasco, CHLY News. Thank you, Minister. I just wanted to talk about the mandate and the deadline. Have you actually set a deadline for Mary Ellen Chapelle-Lafon to report on this? Um, and it seems like there are two aspects. Uh, one is the actual event itself, of whether it did or didn't happen. And secondly, the, the broader issue by involving other First Nations health authorities and others. So. You know, I, I do envision this by involving all these other groups to have this investigation be more than a month. It could be months up, or do you expect it to be weeks? Well, I think to, two things. I think um, um, what we need to do is is advance our work together first of all, and uh, and to keep engaging in that work and making change, and changing uh, the dynamic so that that uh, and that's why. Uh, we've appointed uh, in all of our health authority boards two indigenous representatives to make change, and we just got to continue to do those sorts of things. But in terms of the specific investigation, uh, I spoke to uh, Mary Ellen Turpel Lafon last night. She obviously has to assess the facts before uh, and assess the circumstances, and then uh, we'll work with uh, Mr. Brown and others in our ministry uh, to to see what the time frame is. But uh, in the meantime, we also have to take immediate action because these uh, these facts and these events have a profound effect on how people will view the system, and we cannot, cannot, cannot wait to act together. And that uh, yeah, those actions will also be required. So action is required to be immediate. We need to take the time to assess the facts, and then we need to follow on the recommendations. And you can expect the recommendations that Ms. Turpel Lafon makes will be followed. Lisa, do you have a follow-up? Uh, is there a specific deadline for Ms. Turpel Lafon? Uh, not, there isn't a specific deadline yet. Obviously, uh, um, the sooner the better, but we also, uh, in such an investigation, it's uh, Ms. Tur Turpel Lafon is independent in determining that, and she will have to look at the facts and decide uh, whether she needs to, re to, to report in an interim way than a final way or what we need to do. It's my expectation, of course, that such a report would be made public. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining. Please disconnect. Thank you. Okay, of course, this is all very disturbing, um, having games like uh, like this being played with healthcare in care. And it's still uh, up in the air if it has had an effect on care itself. But the good part is that... Um, Mary Ellen uh, Trapel Lafon is a very much a, a, an advocate for 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 human rights. Very much so, going to be involved in ensuring that um, that people find the the right justice and everything. Um, she has a history of that as a lawyer, as um, of course, um, a judge, and she's uh, represented um, children and youth um, very ex extensively for uh, for rights, and so Adrian Dix probably made a very good choice in choosing her to to head up this investigation. We will follow this very closely and see how this actually turns out. Uh, thank you for listening and. We will talk to everyone later. We want to thank Meet Fox for providing us with a platform to record our interviews. Um, please do visit meetfox.com. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.